Hello everyone, and welcome to the Smart Move to UK's podcast channel, where we explore UK immigration to help you achieve your goals. Today, we're tackling a topic that can be a real headache for UK businesses, that is, the cooling off periods for sponsor license. Let's break down exactly what that means and why it might affect you. Before we dive in, let's quickly discuss what is a sponsor license? A sponsor license is a must have for any UK business that wants to sponsor foreign workers under skilled worker or business mobility routes. It essentially allows you to hire talent from overseas and navigate the immigration process. But remember, this privilege comes with responsibility. The Home Office expects strict adherence to their rules. What is a cooling off period? Okay, so what happens if your sponsor license application gets refused or worse, revoked? That's where cooling off periods come in. Think of it as a timeout, a period where you're ineligible to reapply for a sponsor license. This prevents companies from bombarding the Home Office with repeated applications. So, why do cooling off periods exist? There are a few reasons for this policy. Firstly, it gives the Home Office time to assess the situation and understand why the application failed. Secondly, it allows companies a chance to address any shortcomings identified during the refusal or revocation process. What triggers a cooling off period? So, what exactly puts you in cooling off territory? Here are the common culprits. 1. A previous sponsor license application refusal. 2. Having your existing sponsor license revoked. 3. Receiving civil penalties for employing illegal workers or breaching tenancy rules. 4. Criminal convictions related to immigration offenses. Here's an important note. Cooling off periods aren't just for companies. Also a crucial detail to know, cooling off periods can impact not just the company itself, but also individuals associated with it. This includes owners, directors, key personnel, and anyone involved in the day-to-day -day operations. So, it's essential to check everyone's eligibility before submitting a new application. Duration of cooling off periods The length of the cooling off period depends on the reason for its imposition. Let's discuss the breakdown here. 1. No cooling off period This applies if your previous application was submitted by a representative, documents weren't provided due to reasons beyond your control, or you applied under the scale-up route with a specific technicality. 2. Six-month cooling off period this applies if your previous application was refused for reasons other than those mentioned above. 3. 12-month cooling off period. This applies to situations where a previously held license was revoked or surrendered during compliance action or when a civil penalty was issued for employing illegal workers or renting to unqualified adults. 4. Up to 5-year cooling off period. This applies to cases with multiple civil penalties or charges related to illegal workers, cooperation levels with authorities, and timely payment of fines. 5. Automatic 5-year cooling off period. This applies to penalties or charges for offenses like carrying undocumented passengers. Applying after a cooling off period. Once the cooling off period is over, you can reapply for a sponsor license. But remember, just waiting it out isn't enough. You need to demonstrate significant improvements. This means addressing the issues that led to the previous refusal or revocation and showcasing a robust compliance system. The Home Office might even conduct a compliance visit to assess your readiness. Let's discuss a few tips for a successful application. First, clearly demonstrate that the reasons for the previous refusal or revocation are no longer valid. Second, be prepared for a potential compliance visit from the Home Office. And third, submit a detailed and well-structured application that clearly outlines your ability to comply with sponsor license requirements. 
Don't go it alone, seek expert advice first. Navigating sponsor licenses, especially after a refusal or revocation, can be complex. We strongly recommend seeking guidance from a qualified UK sponsor license consultant. We'll include the contact information for a sponsor license consultant in the episode description below. They can help you understand the cooling off period in your specific situation, prepare a strong application, and increase your chances of success. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you found this episode insightful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel.